everyone. Uh, today I'm here with Sheen Dong, who is going to teach us how to make a very cool mathematical crochet model of her own design. So what are we going to learn today? Uh, we're going to learn a um, structure like this, which I, I will oh. call a uh, surface bounded by the triple order. Oh, wow. Yeah, you can, you can come up with a beautiful name, but at this point I just call it like this. Mm -hmm. um, so the, a trefoil knot is really the mathematical term for the simplest non-trivial knot mm -hmm. and uh, it's basically made by the overhand knot that we always tie and join the ends together. Okay. So it's, it's a very common and simple uh, knot and um, in decorative knotting, you, when you tie a knot, it's always come with a ball or something, otherwise they won't stay close, stay together. Yeah. So, but I wanted to make it more expanded, more mm -hmm. stretched out in space. So that's why I, I, I started doing um, surfaces bounded by knots. Oh, great. Yeah. Shi Ying and I met at the National Museum of Mathematics where she was doing some workshops. Um, and I learned how to make some of her crochet models. I've been slowly working my way <laughs> through a few of them. Um, and I've had a lot of fun figuring out how to make them, so I thought that you guys would too. Uh, so if they want to stay updated on your work, where can they find you? Uh, I have an Instagram page on um, my mathematical attempts. <laughs> attempts for mathematical structures. Okay. Yes. Uh, including the crochet work and some clay and some woodwork. Okay, great. Yeah, so we'll link that down below for you. Hey, let's get started. Hey. <laughs> the tutorial for this project ended up being so long that I've made a separate video. So if you want to learn how to make this guy in detail, go on over to that video. Here in this video, we're going to give a quick overview of how to make this, and then we'll talk a little bit about the math and the general principles behind it. First, you need to make a chain with at least 48 stitches. And then you're going to divide it into three segments using stitch markers, each segment of length 15. These will be the three leaves on the surface. Then we construct what's called the chain graph. It's helpful to use a ball to visualize this. The chain graph will have two vertices, the north and the south poles of the ball, and three edges connecting them. But each edge will have the same oriented twist. This will give us the correct topology to have the boundary be the trefoil knot. This chain graph will be along the center of the model, and as we add more rounds, we'll build it out. Shi Ying does two rounds on her project, one to thicken the band, and then one to emphasize the outer edges of the model and beautify it. The last step in the process is to crochet wire with a different color yarn to highlight the trefoil knot on the boundary. So the trefoil knot is the first, the simplest non-trivial knot. Um, and it's, it's elegant in my opinion because, um, oh, I guess when you really talk about beauty, you don't really need to explain it. But if you do an overhand knot and actually join the ends together, it gives you the trefoil knot. So to me, it's, it's, it's just amazing that we've been doing trefoil knots all the time without knowing it. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of arranging it properly. Mm -hmm. And also, this is uh, also a torus knot. I mean, if, if this arrangement doesn't really, it doesn't highlight the torusness in it, but if you really trace the line, you can see that it will go this direction uh, twice and that direction. <laughs> I want to work for that three times. Yeah. Um, so in this way, it's a torus knot. But the good news is with this technique... Um, so this is the smallest torus knot. Smallest torus knot. So, but now we know how to make the, for the two and three, this is a two, three or three, two torus knot. Mm -hmm. But you can imagine with the same mindset, you can basically make any torus knot. For example, if you 
we here in this case we made a decision of two vertices and three in between mm -hmm. the two vertices. Um, but if you want to have two five, for example, mm -hmm. instead of three, you could have done five in between, and that will give you a two five torus knob. So even though we made a very simple knob, but this technique can ex can generalize. Okay, so this one is great, but there's another way of making this particular uh, knot. So wait, there's another way to make a surface with a trefoil knot as a boundary. Right. If we look at this trefoil knot, what we have made in this model is we made this patch, and we made all the outer patch, and we made three ways of joining this patch and this patch, this patch and this patch. Mm -hmm. But we, don't, we didn't have to make that choice. So instead of make, uh, making these two patches, we could, have made, we could have made three patches here, leaving these two um, blank. So if we made these three patches, then we will have a twist in between this patch and this patch, and this patch and this patch. And, and, and you can see, trace the knot diagram, you will see that it's, it will be the same twist. So in particular, we're going to make the, this patch here, and this patch here, and this patch here, and form a loop, but with a three twist. So I'm going to show you quickly how to set this up. So I'm gonna start from a chain sufficiently long. Again, it's topological, so it doesn't really matter what exact number is. So I'm gonna twist your twist once, twice, and three times, and you're gonna join the ends together. So because it's it's almost like making mobile span, but you are twisting three times. So you join ends together. This the boundary of this is also a truffle or not. And it's hard to see if you look at this and this, they look very different. But we know from the knot diagram that they are the same thing. So I'm gonna quickly show you how you join the ends together. You're gonna join the ends by crocheting into the same stitch. It's gonna go twice. So just like a mobile span until you come back at the beginning. And that will be a complete model for the truffle knot as well. Yeah. And which one is better? Oh, there's no better or worse. <laughs> I just like this one because I like the leaves. And uh, you can, of course, add stitch arrangements and make it also pretty in its own way. Mm -hmm. um, I, I just haven't did it, haven't done it. I don't know why. I, I guess I was just thinking it's just almost the same as a mobile span, so I just didn't do it. Um, but I've seen a lot of great uh, expression of mobile spans, um, crochet mobile spans. So I encourage whoever's interested, um, make this one and see what, what kind of arrangements you can come up with. Yeah. Oh, by the way, um, I guess the reason why you see this more often is this is orientable and this is unorientable. And some people prefer orientable <laughs> so this is not me. But um, I, I think that's probably the reason why you see this more often in different mass art. How pictures. can I think about orientable versus unorientable surfaces? Uh, well, I think sometimes people call it one-sided and two-sided. And if you travel from any spot of uh, oriented, or of an oriented surface, it will never go back to the back of it. Mm -hmm. So in the sense that you can define the front side or back side of a surface. You can call this is front side and then the other one will be back side and they will never cross each other. Well, versus for uh, our unorientable one, you will have a path, you start from point, you will have to, you will travel a certain way and then you will come back to the back of it. Mm -hmm. Just like a movie span. Yes, exactly. And for the things that I've personally been making, I, I almost always twist an edge once, either this direction or that direction of combination, but I barely leave a twist, a band untwisted or twist twice. So I know each, each edge has one twist. And for me, I can just check it has like, even if there's an odd number of passage, then close path, then it's an unorientable surface. And in this case, it has three, because from here, 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 there's a three one twist, so that's unorientable. And in this case, 
um, starting from any starting from top to bottom, but you want to travel back up, it's a path of two um, two edges. And every time you want to go back, it's always an odd, even number because you want to go down first and go up again. So it's always an uh, even number. So this one is orientable. So we did. You told us to do forty nine stitches for the chain, but. Right. We don't, you don't have to do that in order to make this project. Correct. You can make different sizes. Correct. So, for example, um, because all we have, all, all, well, all I want to teach people is about topological crochet. Oh. And for topologies, the size doesn't really matter. And I choose that number because it's first easy to remember. And second, it matches with my um, tamari ball very well. Okay. So I don't have to remake one. Um, but in reality, you can make any chain number you want. Like for example, I this one is made of twenty-two stitches, so each leg is seven stitches. If I remember correctly. Oh, it's so small. So, this one, yeah, it has a whole family here. This will be eight <laughs> stitches. <laughs> if you want to try out, and I didn't, I only made two, one round because there's no space to squeeze another round for these babies. Nine stitches, and I possibly ten and eleven. I don't remember details actually. So, and uh, I have a giant one here too. Oh my goodness. Um, it's, I don't remember, but it's probably the same stitch, but different yarn size. So you, you see, it feels a little different. Mm -hmm. um, but again, yes, the, the stitch number and the number of rows that you want to crochet, or how are you going to finish the boundary, it's all your personal choice. All, all you need to do from this um, video is to remember how to set up the chain graph. Ah, and go in the world to your oyster. Yes. Awesome. Yes. Great. Yeah. So I think I got it. Hooray! It's it's beautiful. beautiful. Thank you so much for teaching us how to make these My pleasure. fantastic models um, and for taking the time to be here with me today. Uh, so we wanted to also give you guys a glimpse of what she <laughs> has done be way beyond this simple model. These are some of Shane's other models that she has made. Mm -hmm. uh, all of her other experiments. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I, I don't have a pattern that I can, pattern book that I can read from. Mm -hmm. So I just come up with random ideas and see what uh, will happen if I do this and that. Well, well, I mean, they look fantastic. Thank um, you. <laughs> your own version too. Yeah. Yes, I have many, uh, many, many ideas, but I can only do so many myself. So I'll, I'll be look for. I will be so excited if some of you will come up with interesting models. That's right. And we can have a community and we can share our own work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so if you're going to be at the Bridges Conference, the Map Art Conference this summer in Canada, uh, then make sure to look up Shane's workshop. She's going to be there and make this. <laughs> yes. And you can learn in person by yes. saying one of these. Yes. Awesome. And see some of this beautiful work in person. I'm, I'm going to display this one in the art exhibition. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's awesome. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so thank you for being with us here today, um, and as always, keep exploring.